Now, agriculture has been the backbone of the economy over the years, creating jobs for many Ghanaians, thereby contributing immensely to the country's GDP. The sector has, however, lost this attribute to the services sector in recent years, as most farmers continue to undertake subsistence production with little emphasis on commercial production. Now, analysts and stakeholders, however, believe the sector's agribusiness holds the key to maximizing the economic benefits of the sector. But how exactly? Well, Sheila Tamaklo has been exploring ahead of the Joy Business Talks on agribusiness scheduled for next Tuesday, July 19, at the Alisa Hotel here in Accra. When, when we say agri, we look at uh, crops, we look at animals, we look at fisheries, we look at soil, we look at the environment. Agri is a very broad area, but mainly when we talk of agri in Ghana, people try to look at only crop farming, and they try to forget about the animal side and then the fishery side. But when we look at agri productivity, we are looking at crops, animals, and fisheries. From survey that we have, we know that about 60 to 80 percent of the Ghanaian population are into farming in one way or the other. In 2009, the contribution of agriculture to GDP stood at 31.9% falling to 22% in 2013. Blah, 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 blah. Currently, the Ghana Statistical Service puts Agric's contribution to GDP to as low as 12.2%. For the first quarter of 2016, it recorded 4,345.5 million Ghana CD as compared to 1,626.3 million Ghana CD for the same period in 2009. Its contribution Though high has recorded some percentage decline, while some believe this poor performance is as a result of a lack of modernization, others say individual subsectors have not done badly but have only been overtaken by the sectors such as services. population of farmers currently falls within the old age bracket. David Kabu is a mango farmer and the 2009 national best farmer. If you have the produce, you go to the market, the market is there. You have a big market for mangoes. I keep saying that uh, mango is green gold. Then Assam and mangoes, cocoa doesn't come anywhere close to mango. We've managed to enter into some sort of agreement with uh, Vetro. Uh, Vetro they supply directly to Tesco and Mass and Spencer because they have the seal. You know, they are one of the biggest in Kenya and they are also here now. So Quarty Weblink entered some sort of agreement with them. Uh, and uh, so we're going to ship about 40 containers. But then uh, Global Gap, when our Global Gap uh, certification expired, uh, the Global Gap world said we should log on to option 5. We took a longer time. So by the time the certification came, the foods were over matured. Uh, I mean, the bricks were higher than you could do by sea. So we couldn't do anything. So you see all the cuttings around. And uh, so we are hoping that the binos will do about 80 containers from here if all goes well. That's, and that is why we are saying that we create a lot of employment because we have two ships running. The packhouse basically, you see here, is Rolls Royce. It does five metric tons an hour. So it is for four metric tons, for, for, for four hours, you have 20 metric tons, which is a full container. For, yeah, so for eight hours, you, you are doing I mean, two containers. He identifies some challenges crop farmers face. The research stations need to be really re-equipped to be able to do most of the things. Because for instance, if you come to the mango center, one of our major challenges are fruit flies. And fruit fl flies is regional issue. Do you understand? And we felt that by now, government should have taken a holistic uh, uh, view in tackling fruit uh, flies as against what we are doing, the farmers themselves are doing on their own. Like what they did with cocoa, mass spray and other things. That's what we are expecting uh, social government to do under fruit flies.
livestock is one of the important subsectors that have been virtually overlooked. The livestock subsector contributes to the economy in many ways, even though its contribution to the GDP and food intake for the population are relatively low as compared to the crop subsector. Livestock contributed 7.1% to the growth of agriculture in 2016 first quarter. The poultry industry is a component of the livestock sector which has not been given adequate attention over the years. They don't, they are poultry products here. Francis Hammond is a former CEO of the Ghana Poultry Farmers Association. He says the challenges affecting the industry are many. If you talk about poultry, whether you are into broiler production or layer production, what are we talking about? Let's get to the basic. We are talking about they will think uh, chicks, then after, which is imported. So from the word go, you are importing a day old chick, which will be far higher in cost to anybody in any of those countries that we are referring to, whether it's USA or Brazil or even England. You know, once you import it to Ghana, the unit cost plus other charges. You know, so you start. But let's let's say that the cost of the chick is not too. Right. But when it comes to production, the poultry feed, what goes into the poultry feed? You are talking about the, the energy source, which is maize, and then the protein source, mainly soya, and sometimes fish meal. You know, all of these three key ingredients are imported. The majority are imported. If you come to the vitamins, the trace minerals, and everything that goes to the feed also. It's also important. So definitely, by the time, no matter how efficient you are, by the time you finish and you have a bag of feed, whether it is a broiler starter or chick starter, the price has already gone up. Most of the banks now, if you go there and you want to, uh, you know, seek financial assistance for poultry, I'm sure 100% will not give you. They will tell you it's high risk. Because in their books, years back, there were a lot of farmers who went for loans and they didn't pay. In the past few years, successive governments have implemented several policies to boost agriculture. These have, however, yielded limited results. There are policies, but as to whether we are implementing them is a problem. The challenges in the fertilizer subsidy years back was that the, the, uh, I mean, we don't bring the fertilizers on time, and that has been a problem. But I think this particular season, uh, I realized that the fertilizer came in just on, on time. A Greek information and communication service provider, Isoko, thinks that low agric productivity levels are largely as a result of over-reliance on the weather. Content manager of Isoko, Gordon Kote, advocates serious irrigation to boost agric productivity and to enhance all year round production. Our major challenge today, as I said earlier on, is the climate change issues that are overing the whole world now. Why is our major challenge? Because we are depending on the rainfall to survive. So if there's any change in rainfall, there's definitely a change in our productivity, which will affect the people in the country. In terms of the climate change, we only have to make our irrigation facilities viable. If our irrigation facilities are down, we will not be able to do it. We have a lot of irrigation dams up north. We have some, a few down south. We have, still have the Afan plains over there. We have the Accra plains over there. We can irrigate all these areas and make money out of agriculture. In fact, we have the water when after when we go to Adan, you look at all that water body, that water line over there. It, we cannot use it to generate electricity again. We need to find a way 
of bringing the water into their grab place and we can make good use of it over there. is picking up gradually and you know there are a lot of things that goes into the productivity before we can export we have to look at our our uh, uh, chemical levels in the, in the protein there are so many things that a farmer have to do we have what we call the global gas certification we have the green alliance certification we have the green forest certification and all these certifications one have to set, be certified with all of them before you can say that this my produce is going to this particular european market and it costs a lot of money to get certified so some of our, our farmers who get certified are the few who are able to export their produce but i can say current this year for example i know of some farmers who have exported a lot of mangoes to the eu market which they, they were able to meet the standards that they are looking for in terms of the vegetables the vet pro is also doing well in organizing the farmers very well to at least meet the standards that is required so that we can start exporting them again but until we meet the standard that they are looking for it's always difficult for us to export it whereas you can export to the european market and to be it will not be accepted by there so what are some major policies that government has taken to boost and turn around the fortunes of the agriculture sector if you want to take the whole agri sector i always look at it that the challenge is not from one particular person it's not from the government alone it's not from the farmer alone it's not from the bankers alone it's the, the whole chain need to be tackled and if we have to tackle it then the government have to look at which area will create a rippling effect which area will create the, the pool in the in the system that when we tackle this area it will affect the other services but you cannot blame it solely on the government doorstep or solely on the banking doorstep or solely on the production doorstep each and every sector have its challenge and we need to solve them holistically we have to go back to find out what can we do better in ghana to reduce our costs we must invest more into maize production we must invest more into soya production we must invest more into aquaculture if we we are able to do it well and these things are not short-term investments they are long-term investments the state has to set you know funds aside i'm not saying that it should be free but it should be given to people who are serious if successive government thinks agri is a backbone of the country agriculture development bank is basically owned by government what uh, i mean prevents government from recycling their dividend at the end of the year for farmers as a soft loan government should really look at the the whole sector and uh, the, the whole agriculture sector as a whole and see where the policies are not working then see how best they can get people on board again to read debate you understand and realign policies against i mean tailor-made policies it is still believed that agriculture remains the best means of alleviating poverty and hunger in ghana therefore government must channel resources into developing the agricultural sector to make it more productive and profitable for the larger economy Okay, so uh, details of that. And Joy Business in partnership with Busy will be holding a discussion on transforming Ghana agribusiness to the rescue. That's the question that we're asking. We'll be asking, will the business of agriculture deliver the aspiration of transforming the economy of Ghana? On the panel, uh, Dr. Al-Hassan Ahmed Yakubu, Deputy Minister of Food and Agriculture, Selom Abrantier of M Pedigree, David Asiyama is an agro uh agro mindset dr charles uh Toto of csir and the african center for economic transformation you can join us at the alisa hotel on july 19 2016 and the time is 5 p.m let's have a conversation the joy business busy talks 
empowered by joy business and supported by busy making good things happen and that's am business on a wednesday here on the am show for you brought to you by echo bank the pan african bank <laughs> Business was brought.